So data-driven is a phrase that gets thrown around a lot, but what does that actually mean for a yeah. business? I think the, the number one thing that when people think about data-driven, it's really better to go to how do you use data? What do you do? And those businesses primarily do a combination of acquiring data, taking that data, turning it into actionable results, processing it quickly, and really, it, really using it to either build new products or to make decisions that are going to help navigate the competitive landscape. And to that end, I think being data-driven is, is really better highlighted by examples because it's, it's changing so quickly. Mm. And it, it's really summarized more by the people, the process, the technology, and all of that coming together mm -hmm. and being very seamless uh, is, is really what I call data-driven. So it's not just aggregating a bunch of stuff and yeah. keeping it handy, right? Right. I think many people think of it as that model of, well, how do we, we're, we're just going to take a whole bunch of data. Mm -hmm. and we just are going to acquire it and we're just going to dump it in some big cluster. <laughs> and and even, if you got it, even if you get it all in that cluster and then you, you can munge it, that doesn't mean that you can actually take those results mm -hmm. and then turn them back into the, into the data. Like the number one thing we've heard from data scientists is, Great, I've, I've got this phenomenal result. I go to the product manager or the business stakeholder and they say, that's nice. Come back when we have time. They can't Which get it on a roadmap. Right. And it's never. Right. <laughs> you mentioned data scientists. What, what are the core skills of a data scientist? Yeah, number one is curiosity mm -hmm. and a passion for, for really getting to an answer. And in that process, what shows up is how do you actually take the data and turn it into a, to different hypotheses that can be tested. Mm -hmm. And so my favorite examples are really people in the sciences. So astrophysics, meteor uh, meteorologists, uh, oceanographers. These are people who have to plow through massive amounts of data just to get to the starting point of the problem. Mm -hmm. Processing the data is a necessar necessarily dirty part of the business to get to what they need to want uh, to answer. Do you feel like the core attributes are more about personality rather than specific skills? Absolutely, 100%. I think there's, there's so much room in, in skills, and this, this is something that we call data jujitsu, is what we call the art of turning data into product, is mm -hmm. that you can go at a problem very, very heavy, very, very aggressively, and use all this massive toolkit of you know, machine learning and AI, but one data scientist that's just clever can get far for, can get results far f faster than they will be able to. And in, 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 in this, uh, a typically a business situation, that's going to have better payoff. Hmm. Now, like a classic example is, is people we may know. People ask, oh, what are all the really incredible hard algorithms around there? And it's much better to think about it as heuristics. Hmm. What's the first thing you s say when you meet somebody for the first time? What do you do? Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to school? Sure. Who do you have in common? Those type of those type of things, and translating that into the math, then it gives you a chance to see which is the right way to think about the problem. Even a lot of the stuff that's happening in Kaggle, which is a, a place where people compete on data science problems, for for awards, mm -hmm. uh, and and money. In there, you you typically have all the data scientists that are using heavy machine learning and AI. And they're getting beat by people that just have good, interesting insights hmm. and being clever. And that ability to kind of realize, hey, wait, you know what? If I push the rock this little bit way, it's yeah. going to roll. Instead of just you know, pushing all with all your energy and all your weight behind it and trying to force it, you can just do this little thing of, hey, just tap it here and mm -hmm. it'll all start to move. Sort of a street sense, right? Exactly. It's, it's street smarts. It's like data. I think that's a great way to say it. Street smarts, data smarts. It's just being clever about it. Hmm. So the last question I have for you, how can, once you have a data science team within an organization, how can that team be empowered mm -hmm. to not get to the point where they run into the product manager they say, that's nice? Yeah. Uh, so this, I think, is one of the very big ongoing challenges. There's a, people have tried many, many different models. I think the number one way to do it is to have very combined teams where they're not an auxiliary component of a team, where it's data science is off in a silo or some ivory tower area. They're actually very embedded in teams. You see that at some of the best places that leverage data, uh, Netflix, uh, Facebook, Zynga, LinkedIn. Uh, the people, d data is a core ethos, and mm -hmm. when the people have ideas, they're translating them and turning them right back because they have a way to make their stuff real. Mm -hmm. Just like 
when you, an engineer has an idea, they can just implement it. And, and it can just be made real because they own the code. That same mechanism is true for data people, where they have to be able to not only just do the data, but also be able to take the part of the coding layer. And being fully integrated with the team allow, starts to allow that to happen. And I think as more organizations start to recognize the impact data has and the value proposition that people can have with, that, that use data, we're going to see people start saying, hey, how are we, we going to start using this data better? How are we going to start thinking about this more? And you'll see a new generation of designers, product managers, GMs that also are data scientists. Mm -hmm. they're, not just, they're, they're not just former engineers. They're not just former you know, designers or, or PMs. Uh, they don't come from those traditional backgrounds. They come from a data science background. And so they will naturally be putting the data angle on things. Interesting. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely.